In Los Angeles, most of the rainwater that falls on rooftops, parking lots, and sidewalks is sent into the street, storm drains, and to the ocean. Not only do urban surfaces seal the land and prevent water from seeping into the ground, but along the way, water runoff also picks up pollutants, trash, fertilizers, and pesticides. This liquid waste is the single largest source of water pollution into the ocean, giving Los Angeles some of the most polluted beaches in California. Every Wednesday morning, students from Santa Monica High School collect water samples at the Pico Kenter Storm Drain, one of many urban runoffs responsible for pouring more than 100 million gallons of contaminated water into the ocean each day. Santa Monica High School and Surfrider Foundation teamed up to create Teach and Test, a program aimed at raising awareness of water quality issues at the Los Angeles beaches. In Santa Monica Bay, there's about 200 storm drains, and it spans 65, 70 miles of coastline. We're just recording our data results on what we see in the storm drain, and most importantly, note what the color is and what the smell is, because if there's a particular smell, that could be, be potentially dangerous. After the rainfall, there's a lot of water that comes from the storm drains it actually goes out into the ocean and that's when it's the most dangerous to the ocean and that's when you don't want to swim in the ocean at all. And do you actually see, can you visually see more trash after it rains? Oh yeah, you can see trash building up in the water, not only in the water but also around the whole storm drain area. Oil spills, plastic debris, soap from when you wash your car in the street, fertilizers from when people water their lawns, everything that is on the street ends up here in our oceans. When fertilizers enter our ocean, you can trigger red tides where the bacteria where the bacteria and the algae just go crazy off the nutrients. And then this can lead to dead zones in our bay, which can kill off the fish and the life. Usually we have a stagnant pool of water when there's a sandbar here on the beach. Um, but of course, the, the expensive hotels don't want their guests to be seeing a stagnant pool of pollutants. So what they do is they scour a groove in the sandbar, which allows the water to flow from the pool out into the ocean. When we got here, there's no flow. But right now, after the guy in the truck just opened up the channel, there's a lot of flow. So now the ocean right there is gonna be unswimmable. There's gonna be lots of pollutants and it'll be unsafe to swim. We label all of our bags so when we go back to the lab, we can test it correctly. The water samples were left in the incubator for 24 hours so the bacteria can use the protein that we give them in the food so that we can recognize if there was or was not bacteria in the samples. The ones that are blue are the ones that have the bacteria um, colonies oh, or population in them and the ones that are not blue are the ones without bacteria and so you determine um, whether or not it's safe to swim in by how many are blue versus how many um, are not blue. There's a lot of bacteria in this sample which is from Pico Kenner storm drain which is the one that we were at yesterday. Oh my god, that's the most we yeah. ever seen. The bacteria levels at the beach next to Pico Kenner storm drain are at 109. This means that you shouldn't be getting into the water and the city is has to put out an advisory because it's not safe. This would definitely be an F. It's not like safe. F minus. Like this indicates that other microorganisms and uh, viruses are present in the ocean water, which can lead to intestinal um, diseases. It can lead to throwing up, vomiting, uh, the stomach flu. Don't go swimming in this area. The best solution is stopping it in the first place. You can't just do like a temporary fix. You can't just put a big net out there and try to pick up trash because it's people that have to change, not, we can't just put a band-aid over what we've done. We should use uh, more drought resistant plants and plants that don't require as much water so we don't have to wash them as much or use as much fertilizer for them. And one of the most important things we can do is conserve water and you can do this by installing a cistern or a water catchment system um, in your home to collect the rainwater that naturally provides water for us. And by doing this you can not only save money on your water bill, but you can save our oceans and our beaches. We weekly post the data on the Surfrider website. It, it's also on the Gila Bay Surfrider Club.org website, and it'll soon be on Jane Goodall's Roots and Shoots website.